So I've had the Maze Fit Bip watch for around a month or so, and here are my thoughts. So first off, we're gonna review the Maze Fit Bitch in Bitch in Maze Fit Bip in three different categories, being price, hardware, and software, accumulating those scores into one final score out of five. So guys, what about the price? Well, the Maze Fit Bip's kind of claim to fame is that it's super affordable. It's around a list price of $100, but you can pretty much find it on sale most often from $70 to $80. So compared to even a $300 Apple Watch, which is Series 3 on sale, or $250 to $200 kind of Samsung watch, it's quite a bit cheaper. Of course, it's not going to have all the same functionalities. For, for a basic starter watch, though, it's a pretty good deal. Now, you can get some cheaper smartwatches on Amazon for $40 to $50 that have pretty much the same functionality, um, but none of them are going to be as, I guess, watchy as this watch. So if you want kind of the classic style smartwatch, this is pretty much the cheapest you're going to get. So 4.5 out of 5. So guys, next category is going to be hardware. Now, what do I think of the Mace Fit Bips hardware? Well, it's actually pretty good. Um, the GPS feature inside the watch works very good and it's pretty accurate. We'll discuss that a little bit more in the software section, but it does have GPS features. The watch is definitely on the cheaper side. Most of it's plastic, but the plastic feels pretty sturdy and the colors are also quite good as well. I really like the orange color coloration with my watch. It feels pretty unique and not something you see too often on watches. So. In terms of how the watch feels, I think it seems cheap, but almost like in a sort of minimalist, attractive way. It's not overly fancy like some of the Samsung watches. It's not like that sporty kind of um, kind of watch that's a huge brick on your arm. And it's not as like smooth and rounded and it's kind of touchy feeling as an Apple watch. So it's something kind of different than all of those things. And I think it makes it kind of unique in terms of how it feels. Battery life is very good for the Maze Fit Bip. This is also one of its claim to fame. It's the price and the battery life, of course. And let me tell you, it's not going to disappoint. Expect to go around a month or so, even with some other features like heart weight enabled. So very good battery life here. Of course, in some ways, it's not all too surprising. The watch face is kind of done with that kind of e-ink kind of display. It's not like um, a backlit kind of display like uh, some other smartwatches out there. Um, but the good thing about this is that it's very easy to see in direct sunlight. And surprisingly, raised to wake also works very good, so it's also easy to see in dark places. I've had some watches like the Tick Watch have abysmal raised to wake features that don't work at all. As you can see, I do have it on right now, and it hardly ever works. Um, what you really gotta do is you gotta kinda have it like this, and then you gotta kinda like flick it like really hard, and then it will work. Um, so as you can see, didn't work that time. Didn't work that time. So it's good to see that for a $70 watch, the Race to Wake works as you would expect. It's pretty similar to, you know, Race to Wake on any kind of cheap Casio watch. You just raise it and it lights up. Very reliable though and pretty cool. But yeah, it's really easy to see in sunlight. The display looks sharp and crisp in sunlight. You know, it's not going to win any awards. It's not going to be as sharp as has much PPI as a Kindle display. But for the smartwatch and this price, I think the display is very good indeed. And I almost prefer a display like this that you can see in sunlight rather than one that works inside with kind of the backlit display that's harder to see in sunlight. Another thing I want to mention about the watch uh, hardware in terms of how it feels, it's very comfortable to use. It's extremely light. The watch is extremely thin. Uh, I could wear it at night if I really want to when you're sleeping. Um, you can wear it all day and you kind of forget about it. So it's definitely probably the most comfortable watch I've worn out of all my smart watches. Another thing I do like about the watch is that it just has one button. And the cool thing about it is that you can actually disable its functionality, which sounds a little bit weird, but that's actually one of my favorite features about it. Now, pretty much every single watch out there has some kind of button right there, smartwatch, and that button always has some kind of functionality, but that functionality always gets annoying because when I kind of bend my wrist, I find that the way I wear my watch, it's gonna accidentally press on that button. With an Apple Watch, it would accidentally activate Siri, and something happened with the Samsung watch as well. But with this one, it doesn't do anything. It used to kind of record a workout, and I turned it off because I got tired of trying to record workouts, and now if it bends, and it hits that button and pushes it, nothing happens. That's surprisingly awesome. Who knew that doing nothing would be very cool?
Funny thing I had uh, nitpicking about this watch was the charging system. I thought it was very clunky and I didn't really like it, but in a way it sort of clicks together in your mind. You really just gotta push the watch in and then it will click to the charging and it works fairly good. Uh, a little bit tricky to find out, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually a decent charging solution. Not as good as wireless or something, but good enough. Now the screen actually works pretty good in terms of how you can control it. I was surprised to see that touching it and navigating the menus is as reliable as it is. I almost wish that there was more functionality with the watch, more widgets and stuff you can configure and touch because actually touching the watch and navigating things, the, touch, the touching isn't that bad. Um, I could see they're adding more functionality to this in the future, maybe in a second model or something like that where there is a little bit more functionality within the software. The watch also has waterproof, which is awesome to see for, you know, you could wear whatever you want. It's, it's not the kind of watch that you're going to feel bad. Uh, you know, or guilty maybe taking it into water, take it to water parks, take it to the beach, you know, it's gonna be a good bumper watch. Is that a thing? Lastly, we do wanna talk about the heart rate sensor and it works pretty well. It's just kinda like a camera with a green light, but you know, it does record pretty good and every so often it will give you a reading on what you uh, are having your heart rate at at that particular time. So this is good for sleeping and stuff that casual throughout the day, but it's not gonna be like an on-demand kind of heart rate sensor thing if that's what you're looking for. All right, guys, so what about the software, the Mace Fit Bit? Well, this one is gonna be a little bit worse than the hardware and price, unfortunately. Um, since it is a cheaper watch, you could probably expect cheaper software here. So I would say the watch is very useful for the few th core things it does well. It's pretty good at fitness and it's pretty good at notifications. Um, however, there are limitations to both. You can't answer calls, you can deny or ignore them, but answering them and maybe just holding your phone up would be kind of cool. No functionality there. I guess maybe they don't want to confuse people thinking you could use the watch to talk to people. That could be like a hardware limitation, but for $70, I don't really expect the watch to be having a speaker and being able to talk to it right. Also, you can't respond to any notifications or interact with them anyway, but I do want to say notifications work very well and very reliably. You can even custom uh, pick which apps you want to be notified about, which is very cool and useful and easy to do, surprisingly. There are a decent amount of watch faces to pick from too, but the annoying thing is, is that there's limited amounts for AM and PM, which is my preferred time scale. Um, you can download third-party launchers from the App Store, but I find that a lot of these kind of have kind of wonky functionality. So for example, on my watch, I have a weather icon that will show me the exact weather. Um, however, I find that it kind of gets disabled a lot. Maybe my Mi Fit app gets disabled or something like that and it kind of breaks the functionality or maybe the app um, and the watch isn't really meant to support it that way. If you look at a lot of the custom watch, uh, the, the watch faces the watch comes with, then a lot of them don't really have, you know, on-demand weather uh, feed kind of showing you the exact temperature, the exact time. So that could be one reason why it doesn't, the watch doesn't really update that quickly for these kind of on-demand weather readings. It's better just for seeing the high and low per day. It's more reliable for that. But if you want exact weather at exact time, it's probably not the best watch for that. Like I said, you can get custom watch faces, which is pretty cool. There are a lot to choose from, but again, don't expect total functionality with all of them. So the software is decent enough. You get a good amount of basic data and you could dive into month by month data and specific day data, as well as individual workouts and where you've been and you know pace and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. It's also very easy to start a workout. You could just hold down the shortcut and start it. Um, one thing is the GPS kind of takes a while to start up and find a location, which is a little bit annoying in the beginning. If you're starting your run, you just want to get going. So it's a little slow there. Um, not only that, but it's also a little bit slow syncing the data between the watch and the app. And again, there seems to be some kind of disconnect sometimes like between how the watch interfaces with the apps. It's kind of like the thing where your watch stores data and then you open up the app and it'll kind of sync it all together. I find stuff like the Apple Watch is a little bit more intuitive that way, kind of keeping the data kind of on the same page between the watch and the app more reliably. Some tools like Amaze Tools that you could download for around $349 on the App Store can give you some extra functionality with the software, um, like the ability to play your music or lower the volume with your watch. It would be cool to see these things built in, however, so I am gonna dock the watch software a little bit there. However, some of these features I don't even really want to use or mess around with too much because I think I would accidentally push the button like I was describing earlier and I would end up losing my place in my audiobook. Overall, if there's anything wrong with the software, it's that it's just perhaps too simple and potentially limited by the hardware. Overall, though, software gets a job done for this watch 
it's nothing as amazing as the cheap price and the 30 day battery life and the admittedly pretty good screen of the watch. So it's just kind of mediocre. Three out of five for software. All right, guys, that's pretty much the end of the Macefit Bip watch review. I hope you like this review. The total review here is 4.16 out of five. This is a pretty good starter watch. It's gonna give you the basic functionalities of a smartwatch that you might need, but you're not gonna get anything truly intuitive or truly interactive here. You're not gonna be able to interact with notifications, but the good thing about this watch is while you do trade off some of the smart kind of functionalities you might expect with a smartwatch, you are gonna get a very good display to read outside. It's gonna be reliable in that you pretty much always are wearing it because you don't have to charge it. You're gonna get the notifications pretty reliably. And again, the price is very affordable. Thanks for checking out this review, guys. Stick around on the channel if you want to see more tech reviews or learn more about VPN software. My name is Tom Spark, and I'll see you again very soon.